Roger, do you want to kick us off, please? Yeah, happy to. Hi, David. Hi, Roger. Hello. Um, had 68% of the possession in the game. But is it fair to say perhaps you're just perhaps missing a little bit of spark today? Yeah, I was pleased that we are pleased that we were players improving. It's something which uh, I've been trying to work on and get better, and I think we showed that for long parts of the game we had we controlled it, but we didn't have the difference up front. But I've got to say they didn't either. We gave them a terrible goal, and and that was it because it was nearly a game where there was no very few chances in in truth at all. And you said that you mentioned their their goal. You described it as a as a terrible goal. What, what was terrible about it from your point of view? Terrible defending from my point of view. Too too easy to score uh, to score against. So, but uh, like we've we've done well. But you know when you're really competing, you've got to be right on it all the time. And we we just switched off for a second. And it's tightened up there in the race for the European places at the moment. You're still well in the mix with a, with a few games to go. What's key between now and the end of the season for you? It's very easy winning. Winning, Roger, is a big thing. So we have to have to keep winning and try and do that. And uh, I don't think we deserve to lose today. So we have to try and pick it up and get the next win under our belt as quick as we can. Thanks, David. Good luck. Cheers, Roger. Roger. Andy, Andy Dillon. Hi, David. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Yourself? Good. 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 Um, I was just listening to you on the the TV there and. Um, Without saying it in sort of concrete terms, it, it sounds like the, you know, you're talking about shooting for the stars, that the kind of the, 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 the Champions League may just be, you may start to feel that it's just beyond reach now. Uh, not that it's any disgrace, yeah. but it doesn't feel that way. I think because we've lost today, because I'd, I'd sort of set my target and I, I knew probably where I felt we had to go. Uh, defeat might, might be costly for us. But hey, you never know in football. So I uh, you know, might be saying something different in time, but uh, that's only my my judgment. Uh, with a good win at Burnley, I mean, I, I knew that we did we couldn't I didn't really we couldn't afford the defeat, and I don't see it being like that. But uh, I didn't see it being like that, I should say. But overall, you know, no, we beat them at Goodison. They beat us today. Uh, you know, so the so the games have been the games have been pretty tight. But I think overall. I didn't think in any way we deserve to lose the game today, I've got to say. I know you had um, virtually a week between the last game and this one, but was there a sense of, I mean, I was only watching it on the TV, obviously, a sense of kind of ingrained tiredness with what you've done with your squad, that maybe it's starting to catch up with just a few players? Well, do you want to know, Andy? I've not seen it because our, our figures have been great. Our running, our physicality, every game we're going through the roof. We've been in great condition and I think we were today as well. I really do. I think that we picked up, I think Manuel Lanzini was playing very well, uh, picked up an injury, Crazy got a, a, a challenge which uh, caused a problem there. But overall, I think that uh, the players have been in great condition and they've been very good. So, look, we lose, we lose one of our best players playing for England, not playing for West Ham, who's it certainly had an impact in, in recent games. Is there any chance Declan will be back for the next game? And, and I wonder, have you any early news on Lanzini and Cresswell? How bad no, I've, I've not. I don't. Lanzini, uh, for a while, when he, he had an injury and it was a top his thigh, and it looks as if uh, he'd had it when he was out injured before, it looks a little bit like a top of your thigh strain or a groin strain. He had it before. Uh, who else? Crazy, I, I, I think, was a dead leg, so which hopefully wouldn't be so bad if that was the case. Uh, Declan. I'm not putting a time on it when, when we get Declan back. I just feel as if we can't do that just now. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, Andy. Cheers. Andy. Uh, Matt Law. Hi, David. Hi, Matt. I'm just talking about the sort of European race and where you are in that. Obviously, Man United have now qualified for the Champions League. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer has hinted heavily that he will play a weakened team and at least one of the next two games were against two of your top four rivals. I just wondered how you felt about that. Well, it was it was really interesting that when we were coming back from the pandemic, when the league was, uh, we were third from bottom, there was an awful lot of integrity required to get the league up and going. We thought that was the, the right way to go. So all he, can, all he can do what he likes because it says his team and his club and he deserves, he can do what he wants. So, but, I don't know if there was a better way to sort the fixtures out. Maybe somebody could answer that. If they could, then maybe maybe we would know what the, the choices were. But the Premier League have made that decision. There's nothing I can do about it. 
I think Man United can always put out a strong team, whoever they've got. So, uh, but at the moment, you know, I think the our chances of the of the Champions League are are, are slim at the moment. But uh, we'll keep going for it. Are you, like you say, because of the way the fixtures have gone, though? Are you worried that the integrity will be compromised slightly? Well, I, I mean, it's the Premier League. Who's, the Premier League should be answering these questions and telling us exactly why it's the case. So we'd hope not, because uh, we've been through a really difficult eighteen months, and I think everybody's tried to to do everything the best the best they can. Thanks. Cheers, Matt. Uh, Jack Rosser. Hi, David. Hi, Jack. Um, you mentioned that there were not many chances there, but the, the fact that Dominic Calvert-Lewin was able to take his and, and Syed and Jared missed theirs, does that prove the value of having sort of a, a clinical, natural finisher on the pitch or, or, or the option of that? You know, you, you, well, we, you had, we had Mickey on the pitch, Jack, who we, we, we see as a good finisher and we see somebody who's scoring goals. So, so he was there as well, as well as the other ones. So... We scored. We took a. We had a lot of chances against Burnley the other night, which we didn't take, and we should have taken more. So maybe there was something in that that you were seeing that we're we're not taking as many opportunities as we should do at the moment. And do you feel you've had a, a rotten rotten run of luck with injuries? You know, you've done so well all season to keep everyone fit, but all the key players seem to be falling at the moment. No, I actually think that we've we've had a great year with injuries. We really have, and uh, I think it's difficult when you when uh, you lose some of your, your players at key times, but all clubs have done it. You know, you could you look right from the start of the season where, where Pickford was, uh, Pickford and, and Van, Van Dyke, I got yeah. that right, yeah. yeah, yeah. The injury to what it done to Liverpool with that. But uh, but overall, you know, we've, we've been pretty good with injuries and uh, I can't complain really. Cheers, David. Cheers, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Uh, last one, Jim Conlon. Uh, hi, David. Um, you mentioned there that you feel the Champions League might be beyond you claiming that fourth spot with Leicester, but obviously Man United are in the Europa final as well. So if they win that, they qualify for the Champions League. So that opens up another berth as well. So if you actually do finish in fifth place, that means you're next entitled to get into the Champions League. So how important is it to stay in fifth place? I know Liverpool have a game in hand. Jim, I'm not sure, but I'd stand corrected that you're correct in what you're saying there. I don't think there is a fifth place for the Champions League. I think it, the fifth place only gets you a Europa League, even if if one of the two teams, well, obviously one of the two teams are going to win the Champions League. So I'm not sure that's right, Jim, but yeah. I, I'll answer your question the best I can. Look, if, if we qualify for Europe, it would be an incredible achievement, no matter what, what tournament we were in, because uh, it's probably been a great season and uh, we're hoping that we can keep it going and lastly for me David uh, just on a uh, side uh, better uh, in terms of his first year uh, moving up we all know he was a sparkling form in the championship in the for, for Brentford do you think he's maybe struggled to adapt to the Premier League uh, this year in terms of bringing his form for Brentford into the West Ham I think it's difficult for many players uh, who come to the Premier League. I think quite often you see big buys coming in. You've seen them. People have spent big money on players and it takes some time to settle. The Premier League is is very demanding. It's different. You know, what's required is uh, different from the leagues you've played in. So it's a big step up for Saeed, just like it was for Jared Bowen, who, who started and done very well for us. So it's the same for Saeed. Saeed's had some really good performances for us and... Uh, but as you can see, he's got a lot to do and there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to, to make sure that you, you improve as you're going forward. And, uh, and I'm sure he will. Thanks, everyone. We'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.